the primordial gods in Greek mythology. Hello, in this video you will witness a brief overview of the primordial gods in Greek mythology, as well as a description of their origins, characteristics, and myths associated with these gods, which will allow you to understand with greater depth and breadth, the following videos in which will be treated in greater detail the cosmogonic universe associated with Greek mythology, thus helping you to have a broad vision. The most widely accepted version at the time, is the one collected by Hesiod in his Theogony. It begins with chaos, a deep void. From this emerged Gia, the earth, and some other primordial divine beings, Eros, love, the abyss, Tartarus, and Erebus. Cosmogonic myths were part of life in Near Eastern societies since the 3rd millennium BC. As the culture of ancient Greece developed, Greek poets gradually began to adopt these Eastern myths. The first attempts can be seen in Homer's Iliad, where in one of its passages it is narrated that Hera comments that she wants to reconcile the god Ocean, father of the gods, and the mother Thetis, as a reminiscence of the Babylonian myth of Apsu and Tiamat. In this sense, the idea of water as a primordial element prefigures Thales of Miletus in his search for a primordial element to explain the nature of things. The cosmology of Orpheus, the mythical Greek poet and musician, attempts to bridge the gap between an empty chaos and the visible world with a different story, according to which at the beginning of everything there were chaos, the night, Nyx, and Erebos. Let us now look at the primordial gods one by one, chaos. According to Hesiod's Theogony, chaos was the first thing that existed, since chaos was the only originally existing entity, the later deities must necessarily have arisen from it. It is that from which everything was created, including the universe and the Greek gods. In the beginning, chaos was a state of random disorder existing in the primordial void, and shortly thereafter a cosmic egg formed in its womb and hatched producing the first deities in the darkness. According to Hesiod, the Greek historian, Chaos was also a place much like Tartarus and later the heavens above. Hesiod described it as a distant, subterranean and shadowy place. With the first gods emerging from chaos, Hesiod establishes the deities related to each known element beginning with the primordial elements, the earth, the sky, and the sea. Gia Although an important figure in Greek mythology, Gia was not particularly honored in the cult of ancient Greece, although temples were dedicated to her. Although Gia acts in the myths as a person and is sometimes shown in works of art emerging from the ground in human form, it cannot be said that it is a completely anthropomorphic deity because of its immediate and direct identification with the earth as a physical and natural element. She is the creator of the universe, she was also capable of predicting the future and was therefore also considered a prophetess. Gia alone engendered Uranus, the starry sky, then she united with him and gave birth to the Titans, the Titanides, the Cyclops and the Hecatonchires, gigantic and violent beings with a hundred arms, were also born. Uranus hated all her children, so she forced them to live in the depths of their mother. One day she decided to free them and asked them to take revenge on their father, but they were all too afraid of him. Only the youngest, Cronus, accepted, because he hated him so much. Gia handed a steel sickle to her son Cronus. Cronus cut off his father's testicles and threw them behind him. The blood that flowed from the wound impregnated Gia and from there were born the giants, the Herinias and the nymphs of the ash trees, as well as all the divinities related to the trees. After this mutilation, Gia united with Pontus, from which the sea divinities were born. Cronus reigned over the world and had become a terrible tyrant and had imprisoned his brothers in Tartarus, so Gia planned a new revenge. The children of Rhea and Cronus had been devoured by their father, but when she was on tape from Zeus, she called for help. Gia and Uranus revealed to her the secret of the fates and taught her how to outweak Cronus. When the child was born, Gia hid it in a cavern, 
at the same time that Cronus was given a stone wrapped in blankets, which he devoured without noticing the difference. When Zeus was older, he fought openly with Cronus and Gaia let him know that he would need the help of the Titans. When Zeus freed them from Tartarus, they gave him the lightning, the thunder and the lightning, weapons with which he dethroned his father. But Gia was still dissatisfied with the fate of the Hecaton heroes, who had been defeated, so she united with Tartarus, god of the abysses, and begot Typhon, with whom the gods had to fight for a long time. In addition, another monster, Echidna, was born from this union. Most Theogony's attribute to Gia the motherhood of various monsters such as Charybdis, the Harpies, Python, the dragon guardian of the Golden Fleece, and even fame. Tartarus Tartarus is the deepest region of the world, located under Hades itself. It was the place where successive generations of gods imprisoned their enemies. In Greek mythology there was the so-called Tartarus, a tormenting place of eternal suffering, similar to the hell of Christianity. Tartarus, besides being a place, was a deity, son of Aether and Gia. Tartarus, as a place, was located even deeper than Hades, in the bowels of the underworld. Tartarus was a place so remote that its distance was equivalent to that of heaven to earth. It was surrounded by three layers of night and a wall of bronze, which formed a dark, intemperate and gloomy pit. There the titans were imprisoned. Hades was the world of the dead into which all entered, but Tartarus was the home of the damned, who were guarded by giants with dozens of huge heads and hundreds of strong arms called Hecatonchires. Like the Dantesque Hell, in Tartarus the punishment was appropriate to the fault committed in life. Tartarus had its counterpart, the Elysian Fields, abode of the virtuous and heroic, whose green fields and flowery meadows promised a blissful eternity. At death all were judged by the court of Hades, composed of Radamantis, Echus, and Minus, who dictated the final destiny of all beings. Eros he personifies passion, loving and total longing in his existence allows primordial beings to create new beings without carnal union. Eros was the Greek god of love, or more precisely, of passionate and physical desire. Without warning, he chooses his targets and strikes their hearts with force, provoking confusion and irrepressible feelings. In Greek art, Eros is usually depicted as a carefree and beautiful young man, crowned with flowers, especially roses, which were closely associated with the god. Other Possible Origins In his poetic work The Theogony, 6th century BC, one of the oldest versions of the origin of the cosmos and the lineage of the gods in Greek mythology, Hesiod explained that Eros arose after the primordial chaos along with Gia, the earth, and Tartarus, the underworld. For his part, in the comedy The Birds, 414 BC, by Aristophanes, the god hatched from an egg laid by Nyx, the goddess of the night, after being fertilized by Erebus, the god of darkness and shadows. Plato, in his work The Banquet, 385 to 370 BC, wrote that Eros was born from the union of Poros, the god of abundance, and Penia, who represents poverty. This combination explains the ambivalent characteristics of love, which on the maternal side inherited permanent lack and on the paternal side profusion and courage. At times, the god is playful and harmlessly mischievous, but at other times he is cruel with his surprise attacks that bring only reckless passion and confusion, the god plays with his victim as with a helpless leaf caught in the wind. Also revered as a god of fertility, he is the son of Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and sexuality, and Ares, the god of war. Being the son of the goddess of beauty and the god of war, Eros is a dual deity, just as love can be synonymous with happiness, it can also cause pain and suffering. In addition to inspiring passion in others, this god was a victim of his own Eros and fell in love with the mortal psyche considered the most beautiful woman in the world. 
From the union between the two was born their only daughter, Hedon, who symbolizes sensuality. The most representative myth is that Eros is the son of Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and sexuality, and Ares, the god of war. However, other writings state that this goddess conceived him after being possessed by the sea foam and that from this union twins were born, Eros, the god of love, and Hymenaeus, the god of lust and sexual desire. These two brothers, together with Potos, represent the Erotes, the winged gods of love in Greek mythology. This trilogy combines the basic components on which every couple's relationship is based, love, Eros, sexual desire, Hymenaeus, and longing, Potos. Myths of Eros The myth of Eros and Psyche Psyche was the daughter of a king who dazzled men with her beauty. This caused many to worship her as a reincarnation of Aphrodite and abandon their altars. The goddess, Jealous, ordered her son Eros to make the woman fall in love with the most disgusting and vile man who could exist. However, the god was captivated by her beauty and took her to his palace where he made her his wife. However, to avoid his mother's wrath, he only visited her at night and in the dark so as not to reveal her true identity. Influenced by her envious sisters, one day Psyche decided to wait for the god to fall asleep and with a lamp illuminated his face to see who he was. Discovering the betrayal, Eros decided to abandon her and sadness caused her to lose her beauty. The woman, feeling guilty, undertook a series of dangerous trials to win his forgiveness. In the last of them, she descended to the underworld to ask Persephone for a little of her beauty, in order to restore that of her beloved. Finally, Eros forgave her and begged his mother and Zeus to return to Psyche Immortal, to remain together for eternity. From the union between the two was born their only daughter, Hedon, who symbolizes sensuality. The Myth of Daphne and Apollo in another story it is told that Apollo, the god of the sun, reason and music, used to mock Eros' skills as an archer and singer. In revenge, he shot him with one of his arrows to make him fall in love with a nymph named Daphne. But in turn, he shot another lead-tipped arrow at the young woman, so that she would feel contempt and disdain for him. Despite the rejection, the god continued looking for her and, to escape the harassment, Daphne asked her father, the river Laden, for help. He transformed her into a laurel tree and from then on the tree became sacred to Apollo. The Myth of Love and Passion Another myth tells that Aphrodite was worried because time passed and her son did not grow up, always remaining a rebellious and mischievous child. So she decided to go to the Oracle of Themis in search of an answer. In this sacred place she was told that, love cannot grow without passion. The goddess did not understand the message until she had another son, Anteros, the god of passion. When he was with his brother, Eros grew into a beautiful young man. But when they were separated he reverted to a spoiled child. The Myth of Helen of Troy Aphrodite promised the Trojan prince Paris the love of Helen, after he voted for her in a beauty contest in which the goddess was pitted against Hera and Athena. Helen, who was famous for her beauty, was married to Menelaus, the king of Mycenae. However, thanks to an arrow from Eros, she fell in love with Paris and the lovers fled together, triggering the Trojan War. Erebus was a primordial god, personification of darkness and shadow, who filled all the corners and holes of the world. His dense mists of darkness were said to surround the edges of the world and fill the shadowy subway places. Chaos itself had spawned both him and his sister Nyx, the night, and out of the union of the two siblings were born their opposites, Aether and Hemera. Nyx dragged the dark mists of Erebo across the skies bringing night to the world, while Hemera spread them bringing day. Nyx blocked the light of Aether, the bright, luminous upper air, and Hemera cleared the darkness allowing Aether to once again illuminate the earth. 
Erebus was also the residence of Cerberus, the three-headed dog, guardian of Hades, along with Thanatos, the Arrhenius, and the unburied dead. Next video, The Titans. You will love it. For more videos on history, mythology, philosophy, or art visit my channel in the video description.